Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. I'm Stefan, one of your TAs in this course, and you may know me from some of the greatest hits such as grading your assignments or attending lecture. Today, I want to talk about a methodology that you cannot find in this book, but I'm using in my work, so I'm excited to tell you a little bit more about it. Media archaeology is a term actually that describes many different approaches coming together, sort of more like an umbrella term or like a war cry or a banner that different researchers feel that resonates with them. And so to put simply, it is a collection of approaches that critically examines and tries to step out of some of the other existing paradigms of research. So I want to dissect the term a little bit to break it down and make it more accessible. First, we'll start to look at the media part of the method. Media here in media archaeology really is trying to emphasize the materiality of media. And that is to not just be fooled by these metaphors of cloud computing or wireless networks that seem to hide or make it look like media disappear from our daily lives. Instead, the media part here is trying to emphasize that these are actually very physical things that we handle on a daily basis and we might need to look a bit harder for them. So we don't necessarily spend too much time thinking about the sender or receiver of a message. Instead, it's all about the channel or the medium. So that being said, we're interested in the pages of the book, the paper, where it came from, what it does, how it works. We're also interested in the wires that actually facilitate internet connectivity and how they work, where they come from, which materials are being used, and what that means for communication theory. So that's the very important part here of the media aspect, is to emphasize the materiality of media and to also fight the idea that media are actually invisible or immaterial. Uh, it just takes a little more digging to actually find them these days. I want to turn my attention to the second part of the term, which is archaeology. This refers to some of the central figures in the field, such as Michel Foucault, who theorized about the central role of archival work in historical research to unearth the modes of existence for certain technologies. Foucault's work was very much interested in the idea that a lot of different technologies regulate how bodies operate, how they can function, and who gets to maintain power over these technologies. And based on his work, media archaeology is often interested in excavating and digging up the conditions of how media came to be what they are today, how these decisions were made, who made them, and what kinds of consequences can we make of that. Scholars like Marsha McLuhan and Harold Innes have emphasized how different objects can function as media in a way that they mediate information, right? So logical examples are wires, obviously, because they carry information, but we also have to think about paper and Harold Innes' work on paper as a staple. Um, and this type of thinking also encourages us to think about other objects and artifacts that can actually be considered as media in the same way that they also mediate information and that they pay part of the relationships between nature and technology. Other examples are, for example, plants or water, satellite dishes, routers, undersea cables, and even dirt. Yeah. That is right. There is a very interesting body of work out there under the banner of media archaeology that is actually thinking through, provocatively speaking, what dirt can't tell us. Of course, things like insects and dirt are media. They tell us things, they communicate, they carry messages. Try being a successful farmer without paying attention to what your soil is telling you. My entire career has been based on the idea that just about anything can be media. Something else really interesting happens when media archaeologists excavate the conditions of old media technology. And that is that media archaeology is really great at showing that nothing is ever really new 
but instead just a new form of an old technology or an old way of communicating information. An example for that are the undersea network cables that we use for internet traffic nowadays, which are actually based on colonial telegraph lines, or the idea that the very algorithm and the mechanics for computing technology are actually based on looms in France and how fabric was created using punch cards. So what I'm suggesting here is that media archaeology fights the idea of presentism and it says that even though these new technologies seem to be new, there are actually extensions of past technologies and we just need to look further back into old histories to actually see how they are not just new but just different forms of old technologies. Media archaeology employs many different modes of data collection. Because the method is interested in what media was and how it came to be, it studies historical documents, patent drawings, patent applications, or manuals to understand exactly how these technologies work and how they operate. We also follow engineers in field research and participant observation to understand how these technologies are currently maintained and who is in charge of them. That includes following participants into labs or into the field or into the training that they run through. Media archaeology is also interested in what media could have been and this speculative side of it also asks us to perhaps visit artists and visit art installations to speculate and imagine what media technologies and artifacts could have looked like if they were invented by someone else in other contexts. So this also means that media archaeology visits artists, it talks to artists, interviews them, it collects impressions on site at these arts installations. A third central mode of data collection for media archaeology is sensory description and really being rich in the ethnographic fieldwork. As I mentioned previously, it is important for media archaeology to materialize the media that are often hidden, invisible, or silent. Because of that, media archaeologists tend to go into these spaces, such as data centers, such as uh, uh, infrastructures that are loud or noisy, and tend to be very rich in their description and how they experience those particular spaces, sites, or institutions. Here's where my research comes in. My doctoral research picks up on all of these central ideas of media archaeology and I specifically study the ways in which spit acts as a medium. Now you might find that topic icky or disgusting, but I'll explain very briefly here why I think it is an interesting object to use for this method. First, I want to show that if we think about bodily fluids, there's a lot of ways in which they actually communicate information, such as in the form of spit. So what I do is I apply media theory to test how, very much like water or other substances and materials, spit can be thought of one of those that carries information and that mediates relationships. For example, have you thought about how often spit actually shows affection, trust, or surprise? Here's an example. Secondly, I want to excavate the changes in the construction of the medium and how it was used to convey information. The oldest lie detection test that is documented at this point is based on saliva and the ability to have a dry mouth. One of the oldest medical symptoms is also a dry mouth. And what I take interest in here is tracing these historical changes of the medium and how it became an informational medium about truth and medical information over some of the historical changes and medical applications all the way now to 23andMe using spit as a form of learning about your body and learning about the genetic makeup that is hidden within saliva, meaning DNA. To summarize, 
media archaeology is a bit of a strange and new contemporary form of communication theory and media research that tries to materialize media as they seem to disappear or be invisible from our everyday lives. We also try to make an argument for conceptualizing substances, materials, and objects as media that are usually not thought of as media. To end, I want to leave you with a little bit of a joke. A media researcher and a media archaeologist both receive letters. The media researcher will ask who wrote the letter, what was in the letter, and who was it for. The media archaeologist will ask what was the letter made of, which paper was it, and why wasn't it written on the postcard. Thank you.